Today, I'm going to show you how to make this. Perhaps your 2018 wasn't so great, but 2019, oh, so fresh and new. Oh, and hey, I'd like to point out this video's awesome sponsor, Skillshare.com, which offers thousands of classes in design, coding, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my UI tutorial, but you could watch this full Figma UI UX design course at Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is just 10 bucks a month, but if you're the first 200 students to use my very exclusive link below in the description here in YouTube, then you get the first two months free. All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. Hopefully you had a great Christmas. I, I took a little bit of time off, but I'm here right back ready to go. And I decided today we do something that's more, you know, based in, based on the relevant theme, which is 2019's coming up. So I thought we would do this a uh, little sort of, I guess you could say uh, more trendy sort of design um, using Parallax and something called Relics.js, which I, I covered previously in a different tutorial, and also something called Scroll Out to make uh, these certain things animate in. All right, so for today's question, what is the one thing you want me to teach in 2019? All right, leave your comment here in the description and make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. All right, so before we begin, I did step into Adobe XD uh, when I created this project, you know, just uh, to real quickly get the idea down. I knew it wasn't gonna be anything too elaborate. Um, and so this was just what I started with initially. Obviously the end result was quite different, a little bit different with the clouds and such. Uh, but I did create this little, um, the scroll icon. Um, and of course I'll make this available um, depending on where I um, upload the assets and all that. So just check the YouTube description for that if you want the cloud graphics as well as this right here. The cloud graphics that you saw, um, I did in Photoshop and I simply used a, uh, let me get my layers out, there we are. Um, I simply used a cloud brush for that. Um, so this was one set of them. And if you go to Google and just type in Photoshop cloud brushes, you're gonna find a million of them. Um, and here's the other one that I did. Um, and then I exported them with uh, a transparent background like this. Um, by the way, I, I wanted to see what it looked like on both of the uh, the backgrounds used. And so I simply exported these as transparent PNGs. This is a pretty large graphic. Um, and so the file size of the PNGs was like 400 KB. Then I used tinypng.com to get them down to like 100 KB something KB, still too large, but a quick fix for that would have been just to uh, decrease the size of this canvas here. As you can see, it's it's really large. Uh, you probably get away with maybe making like 800 um, and then just scaling it up a, a little bit with the CSS width property. But anyhow, I just wanted to provide some context about the assets that are used, which I'm not gonna be showing how I created. It's very simple stuff anyhow. All right, so I'm gonna um, exit out of there. All right, so now, um, Let's go ahead here and I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. All right, so I uh, for this, I have an empty folder called scroll 2019 in my project folders and we're, we're uh, here, open up in Visual Studio Code in that empty project. So index.html real quickly, exclamation point enter just from, for some boilerplate. Uh, I'm gonna do link for a style sheet in a folder called main.rcss and then with a file called main.css. I'm just gonna call this 2019. Uh, we'll create that folder and a SAS file. All right, and so I have the SAS extension. Um, and you can see down here, we can click watch SAS and it will create our CSS for us. If you're um, unfamiliar with SAS, I do have a, a SAS course um, from 2018 um, where you can learn a little bit more about that. All right, um, index.html. All right, so the first thing we'll start with is uh, writing out the HTML that's gonna be necessary for this. Um, so the very first thing that we're gonna have, um, in, which will be overlaid on top of everything, are the cloud graphics. So I'm gonna put an image source. And let me hit Control B to get rid of that sidebar. All right, so the image source here is um, assetscloud.png. All right, so right now, Again, control B to get that back. We're gonna create a assets folder. And inside of here, our three graphics are gonna go with the PNG and the two cloud graphics. All right, so if I open this up in um, Reveal and Explorer, I'm gonna paste those in. And there we go. 
All right, so um, this is going to have a class just for now of class equals cloud. Uh, later on, we're going to add um, some relics JS uh, attributes here in a class, but for now, we'll just leave it like that. Um, and then we're going to have a div container. So div, the class will be container inside of here. We'll put in a span just to hold the 20 text and the, the uh, 18 and 19. So uh, this will be a span of class equals 20. This one is position fixed, you'll see, uh, because 20 does not move. Uh, so we'll put 20 here. Uh, we'll replicate this with shift alt and the down arrow key. And this one will say 18, that's the, the default one. So we're gonna call this one secondary because uh, the, 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 the 19 span class will be secondary as well. Um, and then inside of that, yeah, we're just gonna leave that like that for now. We'll, we'll add some other stuff into this um, in a bit. And then outside of that, we're gonna have our scroll graphic showing up at the bottom. That's gonna be position uh, fixed as well. So we'll put in image source equals assets scroll.svg. And this is gonna be an ID of scroll, all right? And then we're also gonna have our second cloud graphic. We're gonna place it right here. And so uh, when it comes to these position fixed and, and overlay type graphics, you, you can experiment um, You know the order in the HTML stack of where you want it. Uh, for me, right here seemed to work well. So this is gonna be cloud. Um, this is gonna be cloud two, and that's it for now. Then we're gonna have a second container, div class equals container. And then we're inside of there, we'll have a span with a class of secondary once again. And this is gonna hold our 19, all right? Um, I'm also gonna put a class of third, and we'll see how that plays in the CSS uh, in a bit. All right, so for the HTML, that is it. Um, of course, if we right click and open with live server, there's a live server extension. You can also integrate into Visual Studio Code. Oops, I already have it open in a different one. Let me try that again. Open with live, serv live server. This is what it looks like without CSS, absolute garbage. So let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, I have a bunch of stupid browsers. Windows, open up here. I have a guitar coming, that's UPS. Okay, all right. So next what we will do is head on over to that main.css or SAS file. All right, so I'm gonna paste in some of the basic stuff. Um, and then if there's something I think needs more explaining that's more relevant to this tutorial, I'll just uh, to hand type it out. So for our body in HTML, we just have a background, a height, font family, Roboto, a mono. Um, that's already installed on my machine. My machine. So um, if, if you were really making this like a real project that other people are gonna use, you would wanna import this at the top here. Um, and also we're gonna have our cloud and our cloud two graphics, all right? So these are gonna be position absolute, and we're gonna put in a Z index, something like three, and then a bottom of zero. So we're positioning it at the bottom of the browser, and I found that when I did that, they, they were positioned correctly. You can experiment with you know where you want to uh, place the graphics. So with 100% as well. By default, they're real large in the browser. All right, so um, also cloud two, I was gonna make an adjustment uh, bottom. Uh, I may, had to make an adjustment uh, after the fact, after what I saw in the browser to a hundred to negative 100%. Um, otherwise it was showing up, the, both of the cloud, cloud graphics were overlaying on top of each other and I wanted the, the, the cloud two right here uh, to, to be more on the bottom, uh, to show up when the 19 text showed up. All right, next we have our container. All right, so we're gonna do margin of auto, a height of 100%, a width of 100%, and display. I actually did experiment with display, uh, with the, the grid display, um, but I found that the easiest solution was using Flexbox for this. And justify content is center, and align items center. And this has to do with how the, uh, 
the the text and all that stuff was being uh, positioned in here. Right now we can't see it because it's still white. So just hang with me in a second and, we'll, and this will start to come together a lot more. So I'm also going to use um, an nth of type and I'm gonna put two here and we're gonna say background and we're gonna give it a blue color, kind of like a skyish blue. And this is the color code right here. Now, the reason I used uh, ant, uh, nth of type two uh, is basically saying find the second uh, div with the class of container. That's all, that's all that means. And then inside of here, we're gonna put span, and this is for styling the actual text. Font size is gonna be uh, 8EM. And by the way, this isn't responsive. If you wanted to make it responsive, of course, you could work in your uh, media queries here and adjust things as needed. And then font weight, bold. Not bod, but bold. After that, we also have span.20 and also span.third. All right, so this is targeting the, the, the 20 text and also um, the 19 text as well. And they're both gonna be white. And we're gonna put a Z index of two here. All right, so we can kind of see it right here um, by default. Still nothing's working as we, we want it to be though. So let's keep on. After this, we'll have span.20 itself. Position will be fixed. Text, oops, I messed that up, didn't I? There we go. And then we're gonna have text align center. All right, so the position fixed will make it so that it doesn't scroll along with, uh, it'll just stay on the, permanently on the browser, wherever it's at. And then margin left, I'm pushing it uh, to 25%. Um, so let me just show you without that and see what happens with it. All right, so what I'm doing here, and by the way, we can see how it's fixed now in the browser. It has a cool effect too because of the overlaid PNG. Uh, it's behind it. All right, um, let's add in uh, the margin left 25%, and that's just pushing things over. But for now, momentarily, it's not exactly <laughs> where we want it. We're still make some adjustments here. Um, we're also gonna put in span.third. This is just for the uh, 2019 text. All right, color white. Oh wait, it's already up here as color white. Sorry about that. All right, and then uh, we're gonna have our scroll graphic. Position is fixed. It's gonna be at the bottom, um, 40 pix pixels from the bottom of the browser window. Width is gonna be 30 pixels um, left and this is gonna center it, um, will be 50% and Z index will be two. All right, right there. So we have two fixed elements, it's this and the 20 graphic. Now I know the uh, things are still not situated correctly with the type. Um, so the other area, uh, one thing that I, I we're gonna put in that I forgot about, which is why it was screwing things up, is span.secondary. All right, so the secondary is uh, specific to both uh, the 19 text and 18 text. Um, and what I'm gonna do is put in color RGBA, 255, 255, 255, which means white, and the alpha will be uh, 0.14, all right, for the color. Text align is gonna be center, margin left will be 25%, and Let's try that out. Oh, okay, we're gonna put in span.third, color white. I want it to be lowercase. There we go. All right, so we have an issue here where the 20 is showing up to the right of the 18, and that's because I screwed up. This is supposed to be actually negative 10. I was pushing it over too far to the right with 25%. I was looking at the wrong section. All right. Okay, so this in and of itself isn't actually all that bad, but you can really um, add to the effect uh, by taking these clouds and making them shift and move differently, as well as the 18 text. Um, for instance, if we wanted it to not go completely the same rate as the clouds, uh, we can 
add a parallax scroll effect onto the 18. And then we can also use, an, um, and we'll use that with relics.js. And then we can also use another thing called scrollout.js, which will make it fade out when it also uh, goes out of view. We can make this one fade in as well for, for 19. So let's focus on that stuff. So for now, the, uh, the, uh, the CSS and the HTML is completely done with exception to adding a few uh, classes and data attributes um, to the HTML. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and first get our relics.js imported here, all right? And so just by the way, I did cover um, a specific tutorial on how to use relics.js. You're gonna see how to use it here as well. But if you just go to uh, Google and type in relics.js um, CDN, you can get this right here from a content delivery network just to import it. Of course, you can install it in other manners um, if you wish, uh, like through uh, NPM and all that. Um, and then also we're going to import uh, our scroll out as well right here. And the same thing again, scroll out um, CDN, go to Google, type that and you can get that script here. All right, so in here, we're just gonna do some um, JavaScript and they only have literally two lines. So var uh, relics or relax, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And we're gonna say any class with relics added, uh, relics will be applied to uh, right here. And then also we'll say scroll out. All we, that's all we have to do to uh, get scroll out activated on here. So let's first focus on the parallax part for relics. All right, so the first area that we'll add this onto is right here. By the way, get rid of these empty alt uh, attributes. So now what we'll do is put in, um, so for the first cloud graphic, we're gonna add in a class. So whenever you wanna use relics.js, you have to add the class. And then you can add a data hyphen relics hyphen, uh, hyphen hyphen speed equals either 10, anywhere from 10 to negative 10. So if you put it at 10, it's gonna really scroll out much faster than it would otherwise. If you put it like something like negative 10, it's hardly gonna move at all. So I'll show you just an example with this. Let's save this. Now, okay, now we could see right here, these two elements are not scrolling with each other as they were at the same rate. Um, it's actually, the, the cloud graphic is, is going out of view much faster than the 18 graphic is. And if we change that to negative 10, we'll see an opposite effect. Notice how the cloud graphic now is almost basically sticking with the browser much more. Very cool. So we'll leave it at 10. Um, let's copy this right here. We're gonna add it on to our 18 span. So this one, we're gonna have, it's barely even gonna move out. Yep, sorry, this is gonna be negative nine. All right, uh, and we have to add relics here as a class. So watch what happens to 18. This cloud graphic is gonna go away much quicker and the 18 is not gonna move very fast. See, we can see it right there. And this is why we're gonna use scroll out uh, to make it fade out. Because I don't want to, I prefer my personal preference, we want it to be here. This is kind of cool, um, you know, but this is just a, a preference of mine. I don't want that to be visible. See that uh, relics really adds a lot of interesting, uh, just an interesting aesthetic to it when you're scrolling. All right, so now uh, what we'll do is let's add that scroll out to it. And all you have to do is simply add a data hyphen scroll attribute to the uh, HTML element that you want it to be applied to. Um, so scroll out has a, a number of different options. You can go to GitHub and, and read about those. But to do um, a basic uh, sort of animation, and this is taken directly from their docs, by the way. We're gonna add in, in our CSS, this uh, data scroll attribute right here. And we're gonna add a transition of just opacity for one second. And when data scroll is in, when the value is set to in, we're gonna set the opacity to one. And when it's out, 
opacity zero. So, so the scroll out script will automatically determine when a given HTML element has come in and out of view and set this to in and out. You can check that out in the um, the developer window or the console uh, to see when um, that, that actually takes place. All right, so if we save this, both of our files, and we go back, it should now, this should fade out just like that, and then fade back in. Very nice. All right, so let's keep on adding. There's just a few more spots that I wanted to add uh, a couple things to. So the next one uh, that I'm going to add it to will simply be, uh, yeah, just a data scroll um, for the 2019. So right here, and that's all I want to add it to. And oh, the cloud two as well. So uh, the cloud two graphic right here, we'll add our relics class. And for the, the speed, I think we'll make that just four. All right, so let's see what happens now. There we go. So now the uh, this cloud graphic has a, an attribute of four to it. So it's making it move a little bit faster than uh, say the 20 graphic. And I think that really makes everything come into view much better. Now you can see just at the very bottom, if we look at 19, it is fading in. Very subtle. And there we go. Now if you wanted to make this responsive, like I said, just use your media queries to adjust the necessary HTML elements. So it still looks pretty good here, a more like a tablet size. So this would probably be around a tablet size right here. It still works, looks good. But if you get to a smaller size like this, you definitely want to scale down the size of the text. You would want to increase the size of the, of the clouds, probably to the point at which they're extending beyond without any um, overflow uh, added to it so it doesn't create scroll or, or uh, what do you call it doesn't create uh, scroll bars but still I mean with minimal effort we would scale these down quite a bit from I think they were seven or eight em maybe to like five or four and then just reposition these these cloud graphics um, you wouldn't even necessarily have to increase the size of them I think it look pretty good if you just move them up a little bit yeah very very cool all right, so hopefully you found that useful and helpful and you followed along and make sure you answer today's question, which is what is the one thing you want me to teach in 2019? All right, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon.